In today's video, I'm going to review this Echo-worthy 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now, I love lithium iron phosphate. It's one of the best chemistries out there. It's a little heavier than lithium ion, not quite the energy density, but it's super safe. It, you can cycle thousands of times. It's very reliable. I just love them. So previously I had reviewed this lithium iron phosphate battery. This is rated at 12 volts. Of course, there's an, a voltage range at 12.6 to 14.6, something like that. But these are excellent for uh, telescopes and other 12 volt equipment that you have. My primary purpose is to run my uh, Skywatcher EQM35 Pro and all of the accessories. Now, if you remember, I bought this one in the past because I needed something to travel with. This meets the TSA requirements because it's below 100 watt hours. This one's rated at 6 amp hours and it has a 5 amp current capacity. So that's just barely enough to run the Skywatcher. So you really need two or three of them if you're going to do any kind of long-term imaging to put them in parallel, but that can get kind of expensive after a while. So what I decided to do was to upgrade and get one big battery here. I do not intend to go on a plane with this. This is going to be for at home and when I go traveling and whatnot. Now, let me tell you some of the features. They have screw mounts on top. These are, I believe, M5, all right? And unlike a battery bank, you know, there's no switch or meter or USB ports or anything like that. But that's really no problem at all. What I've done here is I've added a couple of uh, 12 volt female input jacks. And if I wanted to do ma a mail or if I wanted to do USB connections, that's just, it's very simple. So for my telescope, I, like I said, I needed, the, I needed the females, and you can just buy these pigtails. And so I'll put a product link for the pigtails and also the terminal connectors, and then you can just do this yourself. And you can put as many of them on as you want, or whatever you want. You can also easily do a USB port. That's no problem at all. That just requires a different adapter. Now, why did I get one that's 20 amp hours? Well, 20 amp hours is about right for my purposes, for my mount and my accessories. If I shoot from say 9.30 till four o'clock in the morning, I use about six amp hours. But what this battery can do is that this can do a 20 amp continuous discharge rate. So that means that if you're running dew heaters and uh, your equipment and your focusers and everything else, and then you go to slew, you have enough capacity, at least for my particular mount, because EQM35 Pro requires a minimum of 4 amps to slew. And you have to have that 4 amps available. And you're on the edge if you're doing just one of these. But when I bought this, I didn't have as many accessories and it wasn't quite as critical and I wasn't trying to do it as long. So this one can just barely do it and I really would recommend two or three of these if you're in, in parallel, if you want to do it this way. But anyway, 20 amps gives me enough capacity that I can do this all night long. And I've been shooting all week with this and it just works beautifully. I'm, I've just been basically going to bed and not worrying whether I'm going to run out of capacity or not because it has never run out the entire night running all of my equipment. And so it has been just great. Now to charge it, you are going to need a lithium iron phosphate charger. Now, when I bought this one, it came with, a, I believe, a 1 or 1.5 amp, and I've just been using that. And here it is right here, and then I put a little tag on that says it's for lithium iron phosphate, and then I just simply plug it in and charge it. Now, it's pretty slow, and so that takes me about 6 hours, and that, of course, is how I know that it's about 6 amp hours, because that's what it takes to fill it back up. But you can easily get uh, some more powerful ones and this can accept up to 20 amps charging. But be sure you get the right chemistry. Don't use lithium ion, don't use lead acid. Uh, the problem with lead acid is that lead acid batteries have a float function and that does not work with lithium iron phosphate. You can use a lead acid battery charger in the beginning when it's low 
you can't really use it at the end because it'll never shut off. It'll just sit there and float at about five, 15 and a half volts and that's way too high. It shuts off at 14.6. And so you wanna use the right charger. Okay, so let's talk about the physical dimensions here. This weighs 5.7 pounds or 2.6 kilograms. And so, I mean, you know, it's not that heavy. Yes. I can carry it around with one hand, so it's really not that big a deal. And then if we look at the dimensions here, we got about seven inches this way, three inches this way, and about six and a half high. So this is more than just a battery. It has a built-in BMS. So it's not like we're simply buying cells. And what the BMS is going to do is it's going to um, set a limit to how far that you can discharge it and it probably has one set to how far you can charge it. I can't test the high end because it goes off uh, automatically on the charger itself, but I'm pretty sure that there's a limit. And it's also going to limit the current, and it probably has reverse polarity protection, but it, I don't really know. I've looked at the data sheet, but most BMS systems have all of those basic features. But anyway, I think that's pretty handy to have it built in because you don't have to worry about actually destroying the battery by over discharging it. It will shut off and it will go to sleep, but you should be able to wake it back up if you happen to over discharge it. And I know on, on these, these have BMSs in there and I have taken these down to the bottom just because they're so small compared to you know, the bigger ones, but they wake right up as soon as you charge them back up. Now what I do in practice is I put a piece of tape over the top here and I do it as a strain relief so that I'm not pulling on these connections. So I just grab a piece of uh, blue tape like this and I put it over the top. And this is going to do two things. For one, it's going to have a barrier here where you're not going to accidentally short these connections because that would be bad. Second, this acts as a strain relief so when you're moving this, you're no longer adjusting these because the last thing you want to do is to wear, move this back and forth, maybe catch on this or something like that, tear this out, and then boom, you don't have any power that night and you've lost your entire imaging night. That would suck. So I'm doing this for now and eventually I think what I'll do is I might build a nice permanent case for it and then we'll do that later as a separate project and then you could have built in uh, male and female 12 volt ports plus a USB port and maybe even a switch. But that's something that I'll do at a later time. At the meantime, a little piece of tape goes a long way to making this a lot safer and not gonna be subjected to any kind of damage or short circuit. Now regarding price, the one I bought is the 20 amp hour and that is for $79.20. You can also get a 10 amp hour version for $49.99 or a 30 amp hour version for $119.99. And if you want to go bigger, they've got bigger than that too, all the way up to 100 amp hours. It really depends on your particular application. So by having one big battery, this simplifies my power requirements. And I'd rather have one battery than several batteries going at the same time. It's a lot easier for me to manage. And what I like best about it is it's high current draw, a total of 20 amps at any one time and that really works great for my application. So the product link is in the description below and thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so if you'd like to see the updates.